Um, I'm very conscious all of a sudden, Steve. I'm very conscious of my Good. so's and <laughs> Good. and my ums. So <laughs> it's been a fantastic uh, learning experience for me already, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so <laughs> and there's another one. Uh, without further ado, uh, I've been working with Steve, not that you would know it, but I've been, I've been working with Steve for, I think it must be three, if not four or five years. Um, I, uh, I, I've had a massive learning experience. Uh, Steve delivers his material in such a way for me that not only does it provoke me on a technical basis, so the actual way it works and the way that I do it and the way that I deliver it, but also on a, uh, an emotional level, which we might get into as we answer some of the questions that other people have asked uh, during the course of this morning. So um, it's not only is it about the actual practicalities of how we run these things, it's uh, as much for me about the emotions behind it and how we uh, step up and work in order to help our audience, and Steve might share uh, the we go and the you go, uh, ego uh, aspect through the course, but anyway. If we've got uh, time. Yeah, about how we serve our audience. So without further ado, I am going to give uh, Steve my virtual round of applause. Disappear, let Steve talk about his presentation and share some information. And as I say, if you have any questions as you go along, uh, good morning, Jeff. Uh, any questions as you go along, then post them in the chat box, post them in the Q&A, and uh, we'll have some fun for the next uh, 56 minutes. So uh, over to you, Steve. Yes, thank you for that lovely intro, Simon. Good morning to you and thank you so much for tuning in on this Thursday morning. So let me, I'm going to share my screen right now and get into the slides. As you'll see, this is a keynote that I have prepared, a presentation that I've prepared. And I'm just going to hit the play button right now. And there we go. So it's how to run online webinars and meetings. This is going to be foundation basic stuff. However, based upon some of the questions, some of you don't know where to start with it. And this is going to be very tangible, actionable tips during this. And please do put the questions in the Q&A and the chat box and we will get to them if we can, as many of you as we can. So let's start with, there are two elements to this, the software and the hardware. These are very, very simple. There is only one bit of software that I recommend you use. I absolutely adore it. We are using it right now. The share price has bloody skyrocketed over the last few months. They provide such a fantastic product. And it's this, it's Zoom. For meetings, webinars, I actually use more the meetings. I don't use the webinar function. For me personally, I prefer the meeting. I know we're delivering on a webinar today. That's what Simon wanted to do. I prefer the meeting style and to deliver content like this because I can see people's videos and I can get them asking questions with their voice and their face. Plus, I do live coaching on my calls as well. So it just works better from a dynamic point of view and an engagement point of view for me. Zoom is the go-to place. Go-to meeting I haven't used for years. I, I'm not even going to give it a look. That's up to you to do your own research. Zoom for me all the way. All right, so let's get into the hardware. Now, what I'm about to show you, the next three slides, there will be a green tick on them. And that means that these are absolutely critical bits of hardware that you need to help you run online meetings and webinars. The rest are kind of, I'm gonna say, I was going to say a luxury, you don't have to have them. Okay, so here we go. Okay, what we've got, we've got, oh, there's someone in, in the chat. Let's, um, okay, so this one here is, oh, what have I, what's, what's happened here? Now, so, so, this, so what's interesting is I now have a tech issue. So I'm gonna go back and no. See, this is interesting. Something has happened to my keynote. I'm gonna, here we go. I'm gonna go back into it right here. Now, there we go. We're back on it. See, even me has issues and it happened to do with the button that I was pressing and something happened that I, I actually have no clue. So let's go back to hardware. Logitech webcams. Oh, and also at the end of this webinar, you are going to get all of this as a PDF with live clickable links to websites and that kind of stuff. So you don't actually need to make any notes if you don't want to. Okay, cool. So Logitech, Steve, yes. Can, can, should we be able to see your keynote presentation at the minute? because <laughs> i can't i can only see you at the moment oh this is brilliant <laughs> see look this is what okay so look. tell me if you can ah, see perfect it. there we go okay so let's go back let's go back so we've got software 
and hardware. Software is Zoom. Can you see that now, mate? I can, yeah, with the URL, yeah. Okay, perfect. So there will be that link is live in the PDF. And then the hardware, Logitech webcams. You absolutely must have a webcam. Really, really important. The reason saying that is because the quality of, I've got a, a MacBook Pro, the quality of, the, of the, the camera in that isn't the best. Whereas the webcams are fantastic. You, the one I use is the C, the C299. You've got, sorry, C922, which is a streaming webcam as well. It's got, it does a high quality when you're streaming. You've got the C920, you've got the C930. Click that link and then decide which is right for you. This, they're all around just under 100 or just over 100 quid. So really affordable. Okay, essential. Now, you can either have these on the top of your, your MacBook Pro or you can have them on a tripod. I prefer personally to have mine on the top of my MacBook Pro, I'm, it's at eye level and it's happy days. Okay, this is an essential one. That's why it has the green tick. Then the next one, the ATR2100 microphone. This was recommended to me in a group I belong to, a community called Podcasters Paradise, which I, I joined years ago. This mic is phenomenal. It's again, just under a hundred quid. There will be a link directly to the Audio Technica website. They've sold them out, sold out on Amazon. I have also got another one recently for more specifically for podcasting, which is the ATR 2020 plus. That's just an upgrade on this, but this is such a phenomenal mic. So this one here is a must. I highly recommend you get a professional microphone. Really, really important. And it comes with the little stand that you can put on the desk. This is so, you can hear the quality of my voice. I'm pretty sure that's what Simon's using. He can, he can tell me if he's using that as well. Yeah, that's the one I've got. Yep. Yeah, and your voice sounds beautiful, Simon. Thank you. The next bit of hardware is for the mic is the foam cover. This is absolutely essential as well. You literally just pop them. They're, they're not, I think it's tenor for a five of these. And what it does, it just stops the, you know, the, the, the plosive sound, the P and that kind of stuff. It stops it being too harsh. It just dampens and softens everything. So literally, you've got, from a hardware point of view, you've got the webcam and the mic and then these foam mic covers. That, that's the foundational level. That's all you need. Because what you're going to, it's going to be a crisp picture and you're going to sound really good. Now, when you do that, it opens up a lot of opportunities as well. So not just from online meetings and trainings, potentially if you get asked to do a podcast, you can record videos as well. And I actually record a lot of my videos. Here's a little hack using Zoom. So I press the record button. There's no one else on the meeting. I use this and I record it within Zoom and then I edit it in Adobe Premiere after. So I actually use Zoom as a recording software as well. Okay, now we get into some other bits of hardware as well. This is the mic boom arm. Now, I'm just gonna raise my, my mic there. You can see that I do have one of these mic boom arms. The, the reason I love this is because I can have the mic here in a really comfortable position. Plus also, now I'll talk about what I've got my green screen behind me in a bit, but what I can also do is I can move back and I can bring the boom arm back, back, back. And then what you can see there is I have a bigger frame to work in. However, you should still be able to hear me really, really clearly. Obviously you can't see my face as well. Whereas if I bring the boom arm in, you know, I'm, I'm, I come straight back to you and I'm much closer to the camera. Now that also works for me when I do live coaching with my clients as well, because if I'm talking about gestures and right now I'm very aware that I have a small frame here to plan, whereas if I move back, I have a much larger frame to plan as well. So a lot of this has to do with, with self-awareness about where your frame is. It just means that you're, you're not bending down, you're not at a funny angle. The mic is here. Now you can also put it there. It's just preference. I just prefer to have it here, have it in show a little bit and, yeah, and that mic there, that boom mic there is 20 quid on that link. So it's not expensive at all. And you can have it in many different positions on your table or wherever you are. Okay, so the next bit of hardware is lighting. You don't have to have this. If you have a natural light source that is in front of you, happy days. But this is another LED light. I think this is about 25 quid. You can put that onto a tripod and there's the tripod. And that, I think that tripod is about 20 quid. I mean, it's, it's not expensive. Now, these aren't absolutely critical. However, they will make your life a lot easier. And really, really cool stuff that make a massive difference. And so 
it just means that you, you'll feel more professional. I mean, I love having all of this stuff because it makes me feel more professional, sound more professional and look more professional. But then you've got to deliver it in a way that's engaging as well, right? Whatever you're sharing. Now, this one for me is, this is a phenomenal bit of kit and it's really, really helped me in just up in my game when it comes to engagement, that kind of stuff. So right now I have this wall mounted green screen. Now it's a Nelgato green screen. There'll be a link directly on this when you click the image and they cost, I mean, they're fluctuating in price as well. When I got it, it was about 150, 160 quid. It's big. So you need a fairly large wall, but it's wall mounted or ceiling mounted. I have it mounted on the wall. Now I'm going to show you something very quickly. It's that simple, that simple to pull up and pull down. It's constantly there. I don't have that, but it's a very bland wall behind me. And I don't really fancy having a, a, a background that's there all the time. So it means I can be flexible. I can have this white background. I've got the Speaking Revolution logo there. And this is, this for me is a game changer. They do do a freestanding one, but what it's, it's a lot, uh, the width is, it's not very wide. So what that means is you have to be much closer to your camera and you don't have any flexibility to move. So if you can put this up, I highly recommend you get this unless you have a, a static background, which you're used to all the time. One of the things I do do, which people, it kind of impresses people as well. It's very, very simple is that you can do this with clients or potential clients is that when somebody jumps on a call, I take a screenshot of their website before. So when they get on a call, I have their website behind me and they're like, what? That's, that's my website. How'd you do it? It's, it's just something a little bit different. It's just something that sticks in their mind. It's a rapport building. It's a talking point. So there's a, there's a lot of creativity that you can do with a green screen. Whereas if you have a static background, not so much. Okay. So my top technical tips for you are as follows. Number one, look down the camera lens. I keep repeating myself. I keep posting this to LinkedIn because I see so many people, not just in meetings or webinars, doing videos on the iPhone or wherever it is. Look down the lens of the camera. If I was to look at myself right now while I'm talking to you, I'd be doing this. I'd be, you know, I'm talking, even though I'm still talking to you, I'm actually looking at myself. But the weird thing is the distance between where I'm looking at the corner of my laptop here and the lens in my mind here is not, is, is maybe about seven inches. But for you, that's a massive jump. You're like, what's he looking at? Now, this is all the time. No matter if it's a phone where you've got the pinhole, look down the lens. If you don't look down the lens and you're looking at you, when you are delivering content, then you're going to lose a massive amount of connection with your audience. The next one, get interaction in the chat. Oh, Simon's popped on. That means he's got a question. Well, we got two. We got two questions, funnily enough, both of which are in the chat. So, uh, just just to answer, Wendy's asked about uh, Zoom and should we be concerned about any of the security issues, Steve? And uh, we had a, a conversation before we came on uh, air about that. Do you want to add anything into that? What I that you're going to have to do your own research. I'm not a cybersecurity expert with this. I, I, as I understand it, they have taken measures to sort out security based upon when it all kicked off a few weeks ago. I personally feel comfortable, but you're going to have to <laughs> cybersecurity experts look at that. But I know one of the things they, they are doing now because they were getting people just, just coming into Zoom calls and, and hacking it and stuff. They've, you know, they've always put a code in, uh, sorry, a, a password into the call. And then they've put on these, these waiting rooms now as well where you have to let people in, which I think is a very good thing. So that's why it, it stops all of that. So from my personal point of view, I'm very comfortable with it, but you have to make your own decision. Yeah, I'm... I'm I agree with Stel. I'm pretty relaxed about it now as well. I've, I have the waiting rooms enabled and obviously we don't broadcast and that's why you have the links to register to come in. So beforehand I go through and check that there's no silly names in there, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'll do um, is I'll, I'll post in the chat box Zoom's guide to how to tighten Zoom down in order to make sure waiting rooms and all those things are enabled. So I'll pop that in the, uh, the chat box for you in a minute, Wendy, so you can, uh, you can go through and make sure you've got it tied down as much as possible. Um, and then a question from uh, Caroline, Steve, yep. uh, does, the sc does the screen have to be green? Um, I was on a webinar and they said you could use a white sheet or a projector screen. What's your views on that? I would always use a green screen. I wouldn't use anything else but green because that's how the technology works within Zoom. 
Um, you might be able to use a blue screen, but I don't know. I, I would absolutely use a green screen because then that's how the technology is designed. I, I wouldn't mess around with that personally. Whether it's a green sheet that you have to iron out or this one, the great thing about these green screens is the quality is so good. And I would just always invest in, in that as well. So I, I personally wouldn't use a, a white sheet or anything like that. Just, just yeah, go just with green. Pay the 60, 80 quid, 200 quid or whatever it is and do the Yeah, job yeah, yeah. Then basically. you got it for life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Um, with Zoom, can the presenter hide the video so just the screen share is seen by the attendees? So two, two questions in there then, I think, from Mike. Firstly, can it be done? And secondly, if it can, would you want to do it? Because I, I don't so, think I would want to do it. Oh, well, say, say that again, not, not show your, your camera? Yeah, so at, at the moment, we've got, uh, obviously, your slides. We've got me talking to camera. I've got you yeah. talking to camera. Yes. Uh, is, is it possible to get rid of us so it's just the just the slideshow and the voice or just like uh, oh, it I'm, would be a I'm, voice as well yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah i'm 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 sure it is i've never done it because i, I, I for me why would i want to turn my my camera off you know it's really important that you see my face when i'm talking to you right now because it's just such a great way to to engage people you know and unless well, there's no reason why you wouldn't put your camera on with this. It's all about what, what does it take to engage another human being? And having the face there and seeing facial expressions and hearing all of that stuff is super important because most people who come on these calls are blessed with sight. So if, you know, wh why wouldn't you use it? So, so simply the, the answer is yes, it's possible. If, I think if both of us turn our videos off yes. now. Yeah, I, we, could, I, can, I could stop my video right now. Yeah. So let me, let me do it. And you can still see the screen, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you can do it, but what's the point? Yeah, well, I'm, 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 I'm with you on that. I think yeah, I'd, yeah. Wanna, I'd, wanna, I'd wanna be on the screen. So, uh, brilliant. Uh, just check Gordon, uh, Mike, perfect, thank you. Uh, Wendy, I'll post that, chat, uh, post that URL to the Zoom uh, thing in the chat box now, and then I'll leave you to get on, Steve. All right, cheers, bud. Okay, bye -bye. Yeah, keep those questions coming. I say, so the second one was get interaction in the chat. So for example, if I was doing a call, I'd say, well, just post, maybe at the start, just post in the chat uh, whereabouts you are in the UK or whereabouts you are in the world. Or, you know, what is, for some, what is the one thing that you fear about putting a video out there? And then we'll see the one thing. Just keep, so keep it short, simple answers. You know, how are you feeling today in one word? Just keep it short and simple so that then when I, when I do my trainers, that kind of stuff, I look to my, my monitor down there and I can actually see it very, very quickly. I can go my, my cursor on this screen, scroll through and away you go. So just remember to ask questions and keep them short answers periodically throughout as well. And it just, it just helps with interaction. It just feels like people are engaged. But also, that's why I like the actual meetings rather than the webinar style. Because if I want and I see an answer, I can actually dive in with someone and go, oh, hold on a minute, uh, David, that answer there. Can I just, just turn your camera on or just turn your sound on? What, can, can we dive into that a little bit more? It just, just helps with interaction. It gives me more scope to, to act on the fly and, yeah, just, just give things a go as well. Okay. The, the third one. Just before, we, just before yes. we move on from chat, because I've got an, another question. And yep. this is, I think this is a really good question. And th this is why I love these conversations, Steve, because they very often come up with questions uh, that I've never even ended, never even entered my head. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, in your opinion, Steve, is it better to use chat or Q&A box for the engagement? What, does, it, does it matter? Or what, what do you think is better? Okay, I don't use the webinar function with my trainings. So for me, it's in, it's in the chat. And normally I have someone else to, who is there to, to do that unless I'm in a very, very small group. But someone else will be there, whether it's the person in the company that I'm working with who, who I work with them or I have someone personally that I'll bring in to, to do that so I can just focus on delivering the content. So this setup with you, Simon, dealing with this for me works brilliantly. So I, I just, again, I just, I just put Q&A is a great one because all the questions are in there in that fun. If I was using the webinar, I would use Q and A and, and for the main questions and then chat. Cause like you said, if people scroll down and got lots, you can lose it. And then, you know, you like searching and searching, but if you have someone there dedicated to that, it's much, much easier. And the other thing that I like about it definitely helps if you've got somebody playing with it or, or supporting you with it. The other thing that I like about the Q and A Gordon is sometimes people ask very specific technical questions that I know the answer to, but I don't necessarily want, I don't, I don't necessarily think that the whole audience wants to learn about it. Yeah. So I can answer specifically to that person. Yep. And, it, and is it, for me, it's easier to do it in the Q and A box rather than do it in the, uh, in the chat box. But anyway, that's yep. uh, yeah, yeah, brilliant. Thank you for that question, Gordon. Fantastic. Cool. Thank you. 
So the next one is have a light source on your face. Now, if you have a natural light source, great. If you don't have a natural light source, then you need to get an LED light of some kind. Now, as what the one I showed you is at the lower end, the Elgato stuff, they do their key lights, which are phenomenal. A lot of streamers use them, but nowadays, you know, we'll be doing live streams and this kind of stuff. They are high end, but they are phenomenal. So I haven't got links in that. You can do your own research or, or ping me on LinkedIn, connect with me on LinkedIn and I'll, and I'll share that stuff with you. But if you don't have a natural light source, you always need, well, you need to make sure you have a natural light source in front of you. Like on your face, not behind, because if you're backlit, you will darken yourself. Very, very simple. Just remember, always to have a light source coming onto your face. Okay, so next one, be aware of your camera frame and the space you have. So like I said before with the boom, I'm right, right now I'm very aware that this is, my, this is the space I have. So what I'm not gonna do is start doing gestures out here and, and doing lots of movements here. And all you can think is, What's he holding on to? What's he doing with his hands? We can't see him. So for all you know, I could be swearing at you right now, but I'm not because that would be rude. But it's just that you don't know. So it's really important. Start to be aware technically of the frame you have. Now, if you have a big green screen or you, ha or you don't use a green screen, you have a space and you can pull the boom arm back, then you can have a lot more space as well. But it's very, very important because if you start moving around, people might not see you. Or you start using gestures, people won't see them either. Okay, so those are the technical tips. Now what I want to do is share my top performance tips as well. And this is the stuff that I've been working with Simon on for, for, for a few years. This is stuff I work with all my clients because for me, this tech is very, very simple. All you really need to do is understand how to turn your camera on, have decent sound and share some slides if you share slides as well. The next bit, the most important bit out of all of this is how you deliver your message. This is super important because you could have the most important message in the world, but if you deliver it in a boring and bland way, people are going to switch off, especially on online meetings and webinars because there are easy distractions, phone, other tabs open. You cannot see who's watching what. So for me, it's really important that you and I, we really focus on how we deliver our performance. So top tip number one is use the right energy to sustain your audience. I want you to be aware from now on till the end of this, this training, this webinar, the energy that I choose to bring to the table. It's very important because the, using the right energy is a precursor to adding all of the other tools that I'm going to share with you. If you have low energy, if I if I'd have rocked up and I was like, you know, here are my top performance tips. Number one is using the right energy to sustain your audience. Now, can you imagine if I'd have used this energy, if I'd, if I'd have said exactly the same content, but I've used this energy right from the start, what would you have thought? Yeah, me too. You're losing the will. I'm losing the will to live. So of course you're going to lose the will to live. So this is why your energy is so important. The next one, stay present and in the moment. The most important thing is your audience, delivering your message in a way that engages your audience. And what I mean by stay present in the moment is don't get locked in here. Don't let the unsupportive voice, the ego beat you down and say, oh, they're not engaged or or I look like an idiot, or I sound like an idiot, or I wonder what I'm having for breakfast, or oh, God, I need a pee. And like you need, you've got to really work, train yourself to be aware of the ego voice, but move from the ego to your we go. We go together. And I have a gift for you at the end of the size, and it's coming up very soon, where you can get access to, to help with mindset, because I know there's a lot of people, and maybe you too, where actually, because of mindset, not having the supportive mindset will stop you even considering doing a meeting or a webinar or a video, whatever it is. So if you can support yourself better and put yourself out there more and consider doing this, you know, at these times, a lot of stuff is going online now is so important. So focusing on the we go, we go together is brilliant because it takes all of the pressure off of you and focuses on how you need to deliver your message for your audience. The next one is honor your words. And what I mean by that in a performance point of view is if I said to you, this, the, the content, this is absolutely critical. If I, so I'll do it when I honor the words, this is absolutely critical. Or if I said to you, this is absolutely critical. 
Which one are you going to believe? Because I'm honoring, I'm feeling how critical it is as I'm saying this is critical. So if I said to you, I'm really excited to be doing this webinar. You're like, geezer's a joker. Or if I said to you, I'm really excited to be doing this webinar. Now, you've got something called the honoring of the word scale. I hit that a little bit, or I could go, I'm really excited to be doing this webinar. Those last two are honored. They're real, depending on your personality, depending on how willing you are to take the shackles off and fully express yourself will determine how much you honor the words, but you have to, fuck, you have to fuck honor the words. You have to honor the words, honor the words. You have to feel what you say. Otherwise, your conviction, the, the belief that the audience has in you will massively diminish or will not be there at all. This is time to let any conditioning about you being over the top or expressing, let it all go. Your audience needs you to honor the words. This is single-handedly, if this is the only thing you took away from this today, take this, honor the words. The next one, use gestures that support your message. Really important. Now, a lot of the time, you're not seeing gestures per se because of the frame right here. But if I said to you, you're not seeing gestures because of the, the frame right here, you're going, hold on. That doesn't make sense. What the hell is that gesture when he's talking about frame? But if I said frame, that's using a gesture that supports the message. That, when I say frame, is like, what is it? Okay, what is he even doing? A lot of times, people don't have any clue about visually how they come across when they speak with regard to gestures. They do the same gesture over and over again. Lose impact, lose clarity, can confuse people. So raising your self-awareness about the gestures you make is very important. The last one, use facial expressions that support your message. And this comes down to the energy, honoring the words as well. If you have the right energy, the right emotional connection, then your face will naturally use expressions that support the message. If you have a lack of energy, you don't feel what you're saying, your face is gonna be like this. That's not fun, is it? No, it's not. So it's time to start to bring your awareness into your facial expressions. Really important. So all of that, use the right energy. Stay present and in the moment, in your we go, honor your words. From now on, feel what you say. You've got the honoring of the word scale. Feel it a tiny bit or feel it an absolute crap ton. It doesn't matter. You better feel it for your audience. And I promise you this, I promise you, you will feel more alive sharing whatever message it is you have than ever before if you consistently honor your words. Then use gestures that support the message, you know, not confuse stuff. And then also use facial expressions that support your message because most people, especially in this environment, are looking straight at your mush. And if it's not doing anything, they're gonna switch off. And you definitely don't want that. Okay, now here's a gift for you. This is a gift on my new course and that, that's the link. You're going to get the link in the PDF as well. And so what you're going to do is when you go to this page, you're going to see there's, I think there's eight different modules on there, but the mindset module, the first one, you've got free preview access. This, just this module alone could give you the kickstart to really go and, all right, screw this. I'm going to put myself out there or give you more confidence to actually do more video or even just download zoom and just flick the video on and have one person on there or use it for your clients. It doesn't matter. This shift from ego to we go for some of my clients over the last 13 years has been revolutionary. Really, it has. I've seen such a difference because they realize it's not about them. So the press is off is about their audience. So all you do, you click that link, go to that page, and then just click on one of those and access it. It'll ask you to set up an account and then you've got free access. If you want the rest of the course, then that's the link again, 25% off because you are part of Simon's crew. Chaplin25 is the code. The course is £222 plus VAT. That ends on Monday the 11th. That's if you want to further your skills as well. Entirely up to you, but at least, at least do give this gift to yourself and your audience and go and look at the mindset module. Okay, cool. Let's Q&A it, baby.
<laughs> Hello, Steve. So, Hello. Uh, now I'm super conscious about tonality, of my facial as expressions. As you bloody should be. <laughs> the emphasis on that I'm placing on the words, Good. my gestures, yes. and, uh, and everything else. So let me just start by saying that um, in the chat box, I have posted a URL to the website where you can download the slides that's got the text stuff on that Steve shared this morning. Uh, his yep. tips, and then the URL to the course and the Chaplin 25 uh, yep. box and all the rest of it. So everybody can um, get, get access to that. So that's in the, in the chat box. Just click cool. it. I've also put Mr. Trister's uh, LinkedIn profile in the chat box as well. So you can go in, uh, click that, connect to Steve, and uh, yeah, ideally say it's... nice things on I the... Don't, uh... I don't know if you can actually click those links. Are they live? Would you copy and paste them? No, you just click them. Well, at uh, my end, you just click them and away you go. So okay, it, should, cool. it, should just, it should just take you take you right there. Right. So uh, Q&A, questions for Steve. As I always say on these things, it's great when people ask questions. If you put questions in the Q&A box or in the chat box, you will take priority over the people that have asked questions uh, on the registration form because it ger generates and creates a bit of a, a, a conversation. But uh, to start the conversation off, um, Praddy has asked, Steve, um, what's the maximum length of video calls? So uh, is there a maximum length in your opinion? Is it 10 minutes, five minutes, an hour, three days? Well, okay, what, what, well, what it, depends what the what point, it depends what the point is of the video call. Like, it, it really does. I, I, don't think there's, I don't think there's a definitive answer to that. If it's a training, and an hour seems like a, a good amount of time where you can deliver content and have a really good Q&A, up to an hour... You know, the thing with meetings and, and stuff like that is people say, oh, we've got half an hour. We have to fill it up. No, no you don't. It might just take 10 minutes to get your point across and, and have a meeting, share some stuff and get a QA, and a or it might be 20 minutes. I think if you allow time to, it, it depends what it, can you just pop in what you'd be using it for? And then I might be able to give a more specific answer. Yeah, should we take the next next question? Yeah, next next one. And, and, and this when I when I first see this question, I thought, yeah, that's a really, that's a really good question. So Sarah's asked because I have the same thing. So before the meeting, what what should I do to pass the time whilst waiting for delegates to join the meeting? So you're you're there, and we've done it today. We're there. We've tested the audio, tested the video. We know we're ready, and yeah. then you've got two or three minutes sat there twiddling your thumbs. What should you be doing? How could you make that time productive, Steve? What, as in, as in it, when people are coming in? To the yeah, call. Well, before they come in, so you're ready yeah. to go. Oh, before right. they come in. Okay, so here's the thing. Make sure, make sure that you have no distractions. Make sure that your energy is in the right place, that you are ready to rock. So that you are alert, you are awake, you, your voice is lubricated with some water. But just make sure you are present as well. Because the minute that first person comes in, make sure everything else is all ready to go that all you have to do is accept and then you can go live you can put on your video and you can start chatting to people so and i'm putting you on the spot a little bit now but my, the first thing that came to mind for me is sh should i be doing some voice exercise some warm-up should i be singing uh, running around the room doing exercise no i wouldn't say music? i wouldn't no I, de I definitely wouldn't say running around the room i'd say if you do do voice warm-up exercises do that way in advance of that okay don't just do it just before you come on because you want your voice to be warmed up you don't want to start potentially straining it literally a minute or two minutes before <laughs> so if you just like just breathe and just listen to some uh, music or just make sure your energy the energy is the right is the most important thing because that's where all the other stuff comes into play so yeah relax two to three minutes just just relax it's so important chill out and then uh, Esther's asked, how many people should you invite to an online meeting? What number becomes unmanageable? So yeah. if, you're, if you're doing it on your own, do you, do you have an opinion on how many you can handle? It, 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 it depends what the meeting's for. Again, it all depends what it's for. If, if it's a, a training, like a webinar like this, you can have, I don't know, Zoom allows you 100, over 100. So it kind of, there's no cap if it's a specific training webinar. If it's a meeting, Again, and you're, and I'm delivering training like that. I, it doesn't it doesn't matter how many for me personally. It just it's infinite. But it all depends on on what the purpose is of your specific meeting. And if it's a team meeting, then you invite as as many as you know that are in your team. And yeah, there's no what number becomes unmanageable. Yeah, it just depends on what you're doing. Uh, what what is your plan moving forward? I mean planning on inviting hundreds of people to a webinar or training, then you definitely need someone there to help. You know, even with, okay, say 38 participants, 
and if Simon wasn't here today, I, it would, I would struggle to kind of do the Q&A and that kind of stuff. I'd be fumbling about a bit and that. So it's, yeah, it's much better to have someone there. As well. it, it kind of distracts you if you're doing both of course jobs it does. at the same, yeah, at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, would, I, I wouldn't be as present and just yeah. focusing on how I'm delivering. Yeah. Now, the, the, for, the, for those on the call that have done the coffee and chats with me, the, the most I've ever had on that, we maxed out at 100. Um, but I did that on my own. Mark was in the room in case my broadband dropped out for whatever reason. But I effectively did that on my own because there was no... The, the, all of the interaction was with the delegates on the call. There was no interaction with me. There was a bit of a QA and a at the end. So it, it really does... I, well, the way I try and describe it when people ask me about the difference between webinars and meetings, it's like if it, if it was if you were stood up at the front of a conference room and presenting to an audience, then that's a webinar. Yep. And if you're sat in a meeting room, even if you're using breakout rooms and smaller tables to have group discussions, yep. then, then that's the way you do, do, do the meeting. But um, and then how many do you feel is, is, is too few for audience engagement? Too few? Yeah, there isn't. So this is, and you probably don't get this, but there's a fear for me when I go, when I set up a meeting, yeah. if I've only got say half a dozen people in the room, yeah. the fear is that I, as the organizer, I become responsible for the engagement and the interaction. Whereas if I've got 20 people in a meeting room, yeah. you've got more opportunity for the, to be, what should I say, of more course. outspoken people. So there's, it feels as though there's less pressure. Yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, that's, just, that's just standard then. Mm. That's always going to be the way. Like if there is a, you know, because... Some people might be a bit shy if there's only a few, a few on there, for sure. So then you'd have, so I would absolutely do that, take responsibility for, for the interaction then. Yeah. yeah. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Uh, David's asked, what's the best way to do an instant Zoom meeting? I'm always wasting 10 to 15 minutes sometimes. An instant Zoom? Yeah, if, if you click on... So what I can... Uh, I might actually be able to, to share my screen here. Let me just, let me just see this uh no it's not coming up uh if you just click on the the zoom app you open it up it, there's a, a box that comes it said uh something like um launch launch a meeting schedule share a screen join just launch a meeting straight away and it literally launches all the box everything you can see here and then you can literally copy it copy a link and literally invite people like it's so so top left of the window there's a little eye with a circle click that copy the URL and then email people or send it or chat or where, wherever, what you ever use to communicate with people. It's that simple. Literally you can do it in seconds. So, so that would be the best way to do that. Excellent. Thank you. And you just, you just reminded me, David, of a little tip that I shared with somebody else um, that they, that they weren't aware of your personal meeting ID is customizable. And uh, what, what I've done is I've changed that to the last 11 digits of my mobile telephone number. So obviously it's unique to me. So if anybody needs the number, instead of me having to go and look to see what it is or remember another number, it's just simply 786472479809980. So I can remember it. So you can customize that. Uh, uh, I think David has just said, but I seem to have to put in a time. That's only if you're scheduling a meeting. Yeah, you, can it's only a meet, you can launch a meeting straight away. Uh, I'd, yeah. have, I'd have a look at that again, David. Brilliant. And I'll, I'll happily show you, David. We can, we can drop on and I can show you how to set that up. Uh, Adnan said, uh, is there a way to switch between devices using the link or do I need to re-register? You can just switch between the devices as far as I'm aware. Uh, Adnan, although uh, within Zoom, I think there might be a security thing to say that you can't log on to two devices at the same time. I think that's yeah, I'm pretty tied sure that's down so people can't keep going out yeah. and coming back in if they get thrown out uh, because they're spamming. Uh, if you have an assistant, can you share hosting so that your helper can let people into the room? Don't know. Uh, I know the answer to that one. The answer to that is yes, Esther. They, you, you can. So if you have a co-host, they have exactly the same in a meeting. They have this, exactly the same tech as what you have. So uh, the way I've used it previously uh, is, is Mark would be the co-host. Uh, and say, for example, I want specific people to go into specific breakout rooms. Um, it can be set up beforehand, but you don't always know who's going to show up and who's not going to show up. So it wouldn't be very exciting if I said, right, okay, I need to put Esther in one, Chris in two, etc. So Mark's there in the background. Uh, he can allocate the breakout rooms and then I can take the uh, joy of pressing the breakout room button and sending you off and looking as though I'm the... Uh, the B's and E's. I was going to say the dog something, but I won't. I won't dog's mention that. Poor, dog's so, poor. Dog's poor. That is exactly yeah, what yeah, I was yeah. going I thought, to say. Yeah, I thought, I, thought, I thought that was it, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Mike says, brilliant idea for the mobile phone. Thank you. Esther says, thank you. Uh, Sarah asks, uh, do you ever use Loom for recording videos or do you always just use Zoom? My personal preference is to use Zoom. Loom is great for like little explainer things if someone you need someone to to do something or you need to explain something like that but the reason i like i like zoom is because a lot of times i'm doing videos or delivering training and i can just keep it running for a long time and then i can chop bits up after in adobe premiere but the loom is great for short sharp videos explainer videos that kind of stuff yeah, yeah no, so that's, that's when i'd use them I'll, I'll second that i use both G generally speaking i use loom if i can't be asked to upload the video to somewhere else because Lou just gives you the link it's quick it's quick yeah. isn't it yeah really really quick and you can fire it off so if i'm in a hurry generally speaking it's Lou. if i want something more substantial then uh, i tend to do it through uh, zoom that's that one lynn has asked um sorry both i'm late to the meeting got way late on the call will you be making the whole webinar available yes i will lynn so as you're registered you will get that um, i'll edit out the little bits and and all the rest of it and then it'll be uploaded to youtube and you'll get an email probably tomorrow might be over the weekend but that that will be on its way lynn thank you that's dealt with that one uh can we see a client's screen in zoom steve yes if if you give them permission to share it that absolutely make them host a lot of time if it's a client make them host then they'll share their screen yeah brilliant and um, you just uh, what you do is you click on them as a participant in the meeting and then go to the, the right hand side of their name and then the option will be there. Excellent. And I, th I think you can set it up again from a security point of view. You can set it up so you can take control back because I yes. know th th there was one or two stories in the newspaper where people were sharing sort of inappropriate screens. We'll Absolutely. <laughs> when they were getting hacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it like that. Uh, pros and cons of meeting versus webinar we've done. Um, is it better to deliver bite-sized chunks or longer webinars, Steve? Uh, okay, so if I would always do bite-sized chunks and you can do bite-sized chunks within a longer form. So for example, I'm, I'm working with a company right now. I'm doing uh, one, a one-hour session every two weeks and sometimes I'm covering between two and three different subjects. So I will do say 15 minutes worth of content delivery, five minutes worth of Q and A, 15 minutes, Q, five minutes Q and A, 15 minutes. And it depends or sometimes it's a little bit longer, but bite-sized chunks, I would probably say 20 minutes max on a subject area maximum. But then even then that might be too long. It depends on your delivery style, how confident you are, and more to the point, how you deliver your message. Because like I said before, you can have the best message in the world, but if you deliver it in a really boring way, people are gonna switch off after literally two minutes. So that question will be absolutely irrelevant. And the chances are if you're doing long format and you're boring people, well, it's not a good idea. I, I would always err on doing shorter, more punchy, simple, actionable stuff as well. Because people's attention spans are diminished, but also think about how, how you, taking information and would you prefer bite-sized chunks as well and just just go with that too excellent yeah. thank you yeah. uh, lisa's asked uh, yeah. how do i not waffle or how do i stop waffling okay if you know you waffle that's very good because that means your self-awareness is raised i would next time you feel like you're waffling if you can and think about the t the, the areas that you waffle in is it on a call is it on a zoom call is it, whatever it is film yourself and watch it back now you are going to hate doing that okay but you may just may need that shock to go oh my god this is insane so it will braise your level of self-awareness it's important that you know when you're waffling think about why you might be waffling a lot of times it's it could be nerves and if it is nerves then you need to breathe and you need to slow down and you need to consider what pace do I need to speak so my audience can process every word? A lot of times when we waffle, it's because we want to just get the message out there and we don't think about the audience. A lot of times it's the ego stuff. Oh, come on, hurry up, hurry up. They're not going to want to listen or hurry up. You haven't got enough time or whatever it is. It's to normally the ego goes, it's to do with you and it's not to do with the audience. Think about what's at stake if you waffle versus and what's to gain. You know, there is... In, in the course, I know that you've got the free module in the course, but 
the other courses with regard to the self-assessment module, all of that is explained and raising your self-awareness is massively key. Thinking about what's at stake is super important. And if you think about that consistently, if I keep waffling, what's going to happen? You know, you might give yourself a shot, but also what's to gain? Because slowing down is really important. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Gordon's asked, I'm interested in using a whiteboard to deliver training on a meeting. Any yep. hardware recommendations? I would potentially look at the, if you're delivering the, on the meeting, so you'll be standing up, uh, you'd want to probably get, I'd, what I do is I get a wide in mic, which is, and I'll, let me just type, let me just type this in here. It's the road, the road lavalier. I think it's, I think it's the road lav smart plus in the chat. So that's, the, that's a, a small one that you can potentially put in your phone as well. But then it's got a massive extension cable that you can get, which is the SC, the Rode SC. I think it's like a, have you got one of them, mate? I have, yeah. Yeah, so that one. Yeah, that's the extension cable and it's huge. So I would potentially put that into your, your laptop, your MacBook, and, and then get the extension cable and put it in and just, just test it out. So get a, get a lavalier mic that can plug into it. And if it's not that one, oh yeah, there's the mic. Yeah, it, look, yeah. it looks like that, Gordon. That's yeah, and it's got a little thing clip on thing you can use as well. Yeah, just there, like, that's the little yeah. little. Clip. And it's a, a professional grade mic. It's fantastic for smartphones as well. But, but I, I would use that. That would probably be, be your best bet. A, a lavalier mic of some kind with an extension cable. Sorry, then, we can't and see. Have a, and have a physical whiteboard to be, to be, writing, to be writing on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to do that. Yeah. Yeah, the, sure. The, the, the other thing that I do, Gordon, just to give you, a, is I, obviously I have an iPad. I say, obviously, everybody's got an iPad. Surely, how can you live without at least <laughs> one iPad? Probably two. And you can airplay this into Zoom. So I, I won't do it now because it's better to go wrong. But you can airplay this as long as we're on the same wireless network as what the Zoom call is. Uh, you can connect them up and then write on the iPad and it appears on the screen just the right, same okay. as what it would be. The yep. slight disadvantage of that from my perspective is that it blocks out me. So you can see the iPad, but you can't see me. And obviously everybody wants to be able to see me, don't they? So that's the, that's the, down, uh, that's the downside. Um, Esther asked, uh, can I take a screenshot of the meeting and use this on social media showing the attendees' faces? Or permission. Do I need, or do I need permission? Yes, yeah. you need permission, absolutely. Uh, yes. unless you blur their faces out yes um i've i've kind of been told off for that esther but i i don't i just sort of tend to get on with it <laughs> and sometimes people sometimes people say you know you can do it and then apologize after and, but you know you probably want to get permission okay just i'm going to scroll back where you put that the details of that mic in i just put the name of it i didn't put a link though uh -huh. it was just, so just... what I'll do is you you've put that into the panelists. So if I do that, oh did I? Then, oh <laughs> yeah, no that's all right. So that, that's what I'm here for, Steve. You see, so that you should never be able to see that, Kim. So that's uh, that'll work. Uh, Gordon says he's thinking of a tablet. Uh, that's what I had in mind. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, Lynn has asked, has anybody had a conversation about the pros and cons of go to webinar? Uh, we did touch on go to webinar, and it. I, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. Personally, Zoom is function so simple and people know it. It's just, I wouldn't go anywhere else personally. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. That's just answered that one. Uh, Gordon's asked, I see many panelists with a static image when their video is off. I can't figure out how to set that up in Zoom. Over to uh, you, Simon. Yeah, well, I, uh, the, if you go into your, uh, into the, actually onto the physical website, not the actual Zoom program, go onto the physical website. Uh, on your personal page, you get an opportunity to upload a logo uh, and uh, the description of your waiting room. So you can put a URL in for your website and various other different bits and bars. But if you go, basically, if you go to the personal page, it should give you the opportunity to upgrade, upgrade a logo. Uh, and you can, as Steve said earlier, you can change that to the customer that you're working with or the webinar that you're working on. Uh, so it's just, it's on the person. If you can't find that Gordon, then just drop me an email and I will, um, I'll gladly uh, show you how that, uh, how that works. Uh, thanks for so check that out. What we've got to uh, nine minutes left. So um, best virtual backgrounds to use with a green screen. 
do you have an opinion, Stay. I've seen <laughs> over the weeks, I've seen all sorts of different things. Book yeah, yeah, yeah. That are colour coded and all the rest of it. Sure, sure. Uh, so do, do, you have a, do you have an opinion on what works best? Uh, for me at the moment, I like a very simple white background. It's just easy. You know, I pop out, I have a simple logo, but you can get really, really creative. So for example, I'm going to... I'm literally going to my virtual backgrounds right now. It depended on, so for example, if, I, if I've talked about stagecraft and videos and how to use live state, I've had a stage in the background sometimes. It depends. Uh, I did a, a slightly comic metaphor about spoons and it just, just you know, and then, then, there's, then there's other bits and pieces. It just, it just depends what, who I'm talking to. For example, you know, Marie Donaldson at Fresh Clarity. I'm working with her and her team. And so there's their website as well. So it, it, ju it just depends. And uh, that's Carl Roberts, who's my accountant. That's his LinkedIn profile. So th there's all different things you can do. It just, just get creative as well. Like really, just get creative and make it memorable as well, if you want. It just, it just depends what you're doing, where you're doing it, how quirky you are, how quirky you want to be. It's entirely, it's entirely up to you. Excellent. Um, Sharing your screen effectively when using video. So I think this is a conversation that comes up, or I've had a number of times now, when people share video. Do you, have you got any tips about how to do that? Do you play it from your hard drive in a browser? How do you deal with the sand? Does it jump? Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. Zoom isn't the best at kind of playing video. I think whether it's on your hard drive or whether it's streamed on a browser when it's on a, on a call. It's not the best. It's a little bit jumpy. I found I've done it multiple times and it just, the sound is a little bit behind the footage. I personally wouldn't do it. And it just depends on bandwidth with people and different people have different bandwidth. Some people might not get anything. It might sound like a Dalek. So I, if you need them to check anything out, I'd get them to potentially look at it after, or you give them a moment to open it, a browser in their browser and watch it on their internet. That can, so I wouldn't stream any of it in Zoom personally. Thank you. So Microsoft Teams. Um, I'm using Microsoft Teams for lots of meetings. Can I use them for webinars? And is there a big difference? That, have you used it, Steve? I've never used Microsoft Teams. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I will add into that. Um, uh, within the community, there's an accountant that's mad on Microsoft 365 and everything that there is to do around it. He's been using Teams for as long as he's got a remote team. Um, he was passionate about doing a webinar on Microsoft Teams or on Microsoft. Uh, paid, I think it, he had to upgrade. It was about six quid a month or something in order to be able to have more than the three or four people on the call. Uh, despite my advice, uh, and now he's gone back to Zoom. So he's, um, he's paid paid for the teams and he's paid with the zoom so um i think it works from the point of view of team communication uh, yeah it definitely works from a team communication point of view but it's not a broadcasting uh medium for me although i have been emailed by an it person that i know called joe burns that's done the microsoft team stuff um who shared that they're improving that so i think it's on its way they need to yeah, um, and so somebody said they'll just buy Zoom. But anyway, we'll see. No! Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, yeah. Then, and then the iPad won't work with it. That's the, that'll be the ultimate. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, excellent. Uh, Wendy has asked, uh, how do you have the logo at the corner of the screen again, please? Do you have it? Uh, do you have to have it on a white screen first, Steve? Okay, so this is so what I do is very very simple. I open to your keynote or PowerPoint, and then I've you've got the full frame, and then I think okay, so I look at I sort of guesstimate where my head's going to be, and then I put the logo to to the other side, and then I just test it. I bring it into bring it into Zoom, and sometimes the logo was was here, and I was covering it, and then I have to move it. Out. So you just need to kind of test it again. Actually, I could probably make the logo a bit bigger. Now, looking at it now on the screen or or i could position it. it it just depends but it's just a bit of trial and error but really simply it's so quick i use keynote personally or you can use powerpoint that simple like really and you can obviously change the color of the background i like i like white because it's simple also it doesn't clash with any of the clothes i'm wearing so sometimes you'll have a background and then you'll put a shirt on or a dress on or or, or, or whatever it is you're wearing and it will clash like crazy with the so you have to that's something to consider too so white is very neutral for me Thank you. Uh, are there any particular good or bad days or times of day to have a, a webinar or an online meeting? Do you know? Okay. So 
from my point of view, I have to think about when I'm at my best and liveliest and feeling I'm, I'm a morning person. So I would prefer to do that stuff in the morning. And some people aren't morning, but maybe I like this time. Half nine is great because people have had time to have breakfast, wake up. However, one of the trainings I'm doing is at 4 p.m. on a, every two weeks on a Tuesday because it's a mixture of UK and US. Then I need to kind of go, all right, I need to put my energy up. You also survey people. When would you prefer to have the call? And then no matter, then it's not about you. You've got to also know when you're at your best so you can manage your energy levels. But then if they say actually eight o'clock on a, on a Monday night, that's best. And then you poll people and then you have a large number, then you will know what's good. So just go with what's good for your audience and also have a balance with you as well if you can. Thank you. So just, we've got three minutes left. So if anybody's got any burning questions, you've them in the chat now or Q and A, this is your last opportunity. Yep. Um, the last question that I've not, uh, I've not asked uh, from the registration, Steve, is around your top tip. So if, if there was one thing that you yep. could share with the people watching yes. uh, with regards to doing online meetings and webinars, uh, what, what would that be? It has to do with your emotional connection and honoring the words. I said it because if you do not feel what you're saying, if you don't have, and let's add a bit of energy into the mix as well. If you don't have the right energy to conjure up the feeling in your words, you are going to bore the crap out of the people on your meeting. They will switch off. Even if, you, even if the video quality is a bit crap or the sound quality is a tiny bit crap off, if you are honoring the words and you are engaging from that point of view, if you feel what you say, there's much more chance of keeping their attention. So you can have crap tech, but still engage people. You know, it's, it's the big one. I've been, this is the thing that I've been sharing my clients for over 13 years. And it's the thing that has the, the biggest impact on every single person. And more importantly, their audience, because this is about your audience, not you. Um, you're not important. I'm not important right now. You are. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you. So I'll just, I'll check the, I'll check the, boxes just make doubly sure there's not so i haven't got any more questions i'll put the link to those slides and the uh, url uh, no that's a thank you uh, put the link to the slides and the url in the uh, the chat box again so you can go away and uh, grab that i wholeheartedly recommend that uh, you do that because uh, I, I know steve has had a, a a massive impact on the way that i present and uh, as steve is talking it's like all these flashbacks of things that it's like of things that i need to be doing as he then goes uh so thank you very very much steve for uh coming along today you're welcome it's been a absolute privilege thank you very much for giving up your time and for sharing it's been an absolute privilege to have this conversation um my hope is that we've inspired challenged and supported lots of people on the call to just get out there and do the meetings do the webinars yeah. and serve their audience steve which yes um, Absolutely. And you know what, just don't, don't let the tech be your barrier to entry, you know, get the tech. It's really simple. And go and work on, go and do that free module on the mindset as well. Cause, and both of them, you know, it's a winning formula. Brilliant. So thank you. Jeff says, thank you. Gareth saying, thank you. Esther Ooh. says so amazing. I don't know whether that's me. That's amazing. Steve, or you're amazing, but uh, <laughs> well, both of us are both. We'll have both yeah, you're, you're really welcome. Thank you for showing up. And same with Wendy and David and, and Ash. She's brilliant. Thank you. So um, it's not quite bank holiday weekend, not yet, but it will be in about six hours or whatever. <laughs> so thank you very much, Steve, again for uh, coming along. And uh, no doubt we'll catch up soon. Thank you. Right. Bye -bye. Cheers. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.